you see the story in the Telegraph uh, yesterday. There's one of the big big issues here in England is when do they return? How do they return? Ghost games. Um, the Telegraph reporting that there's a Premier League plan to return on June 1st, yeah. uh, play everything by July 12th, and start the new season on August 8th, which is when it was originally planned to start. Um, this is weird. It seems to fly in the face of what we heard last Thursday, where they were all like, we'll keep playing forever. We have to complete the fixture list. Let's not put an end to this. What's going on? So, first of all, my issue, and I know already some of the, the players feeling about it was like, okay, we finish on July the 12th and we start again the season on August the 8th. That means less than four weeks in between the end of one season and the start of the other one, obviously, which means like, when do they go on holidays? You need at least two weeks to get ready of pre-season before a season starts. So that means what? They're going to go away for 10 days and then come back and then be back in again, especially after what is looking like, what, two months, maybe three months without properly training before going back because of the virus. I think this is completely crazy to put all those players through this when because of the exceptional circumstances of the moment, you could actually say, okay, let's finish on July the 12th. And let's, let's give them, because, they had, because everybody has had such a hard time in the last four months, let's say, let's give them a full two months. Let's give everyone six weeks or eight weeks so people can go away on holidays. They can have a proper break. Then they can start a proper pre-season. And then we start a new season again. And if that's in September, then so be it. But you can't ask them to finish on July the 12th and start, not just start pre-season August the 8th, actually start the next season on August the 8th. I think that's completely crazy. They're not machines. No, I, I completely agree with you. I think part of the issue here is the Premier League, well, not the Premier League, all the football authorities in, in, in England saying that, uh, you know, committing to finishing this season and playing out every single fixture. Um, I think this is completely, completely pig-headed. Um, they're allowed to do it, obviously. You know, neither UEFA or whatever is going to make an issue. But you're effectively going to screw up two seasons. Because that, let's not make no mistake about it. The 2019-20 season is screwed up. Yeah, It's, it's yeah. royally screwed because we got this big freaking break in the middle of it. Whatever happens in the end, you can play all the fixtures, play all the results. It'll be the same for everybody. But that's that will be a screwed up season. Yeah. And then inevitably, you're going to screw up next season too because if it does get to the point where you have to start in September or October, you're going to go and mess everything up. Like, we're in a difficult situation. We don't know when it's going to be safe to start playing again. But I think the basic guiding principle should be clean break between the two seasons. Let's wrap up 2019-20 and then let's try to have 2020-21 with minimal disruption. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And, and the risk of trying to go back after the end of this season, whenever that is, July the 12th, July the 30th, or whatever, too quickly, is that it will mess up even more the following season. I understand why they would want to start on August the 8th, which is the, the, the start date that was due from the, you know, forever. So you actually don't move anything from next season but that, that that's not working for the players it would not work for the players if they have to finish on july the 12th so again you put their health at risk you 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 risk of having a poor season because if they have to come back playing without a proper pre-season without a proper fitness preparation the the quality of the games the quality of the play quality of the players will be will be below par way below par so you risk that as well and then you, you just don't know how that season is going to pan out. They should have a proper clean break, like you said. Uh, and again, I think it's so... I don't know why people... But it's the same in every country. In France, yesterday, we've had, oh, OK, we, we might be able to go back on June the 15th. Why do you want to put a start and a finish, a finish date and start date right now? You know, we're still in March. It's impossible to know when we'll be able to play again because of, of the way the virus is going anyway. No one can predict now, OK, yeah, June the 15th will be OK. So you make plans and you, you, you leak them and you, you tell some newspapers or some TVs or journalists or radios, whatever, and say, yeah, yeah, this is our plan now. You know, we start playing on June the 1st. We finish on July the 12th. We start again on... When was... No, you know, no one knows well, if that would be even... Jules, I think this is the thing, right? So all these league plans 
all these ideas about how much money they're going to lose. Javier Tebas saying 700, 800 million. Um, there were figures that were leaked. Oh, the Premier League will lose this much money if they if they can't cancel the season and whatever. This is all garbage, right? It's all nonsense. It's all leagues putting these numbers out there. Yeah. They don't mean anything. They're predicated on a whole bunch of assumptions, such as the fact that the league gets canceled and leagues haven't been canceled, such as the fact that the TV companies aren't going to pay. We don't know that yet, such as the fact that sponsors are going to refuse to pay. All this stuff, and it all serves the interest of the leagues. And I think this is where we in the media need to be a little more clever in the in the questions we ask. Um, but one point that I want to ask you about, because... There's been a real push for this, certainly in Germany. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an issue. Most likely, when we do get the all-clear, it's not going to be an instantaneous all-clear. So it's not going to be a situation where, okay, everybody's fine. Let's go back to normal straight away, right? Presumably, mm-hmm. it's going to be in stages. And yeah. part of that stage will probably be, despite what Patrick Valence thinks, matches behind closed doors. What they call in Germany, which I think is wonderful, um, wonderful term, ghost games. Yeah. So there's going to be a trade-off in terms of taking the TV money, because presumably that'll still come if you actually play the games, and taking the box office money. There's some people who think, who get a romantic and say, well, football without fans is nothing. You shouldn't play until everybody can come back. Um, what do you think? Should they start playing games when... They can safely do it behind closed doors? I think the most important, and I'm sure you agree with me, is that we play those games and we finish the season. Even if we don't go to the full extent of the season and, and we stop two games before the end because everything is sorted, everything has been played for, there's, there's, you know who goes down, you know who fi- you finish in the Champions League places, your league places, all of that. But I think for me, that's the priority. So if that means playing behind closed doors because it's not safe for fans and for anyone to have fans back in, 78,000 people at Old Trafford, 60,000 at the Tottenham Stadium, 60,000 at the Emirates, blah, blah, blah. Then play them behind closed doors. I know it's not ideal. I watched the Australian League again this weekend behind closed doors, and, and that sucked. That was not great. <laughs> but, but that's better than not playing at all, I guess. I'm sure everybody would agree that it's better than not playing at all. If you want to wait for everybody to be able to come back in the stadium, then, then we might not play for another six months. So it depends what people want, I guess. But for me, no, I'd rather I... play with no fans than not. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.